Hey guys, welcome back to the Cullico YouTube channel. If you're new here, we do all things fabrication, engineering, and design. In today's video, we're gonna dive into the CAD modeling for my new custom bike project, the KC1200. I've spent the last month or so slowly going through all the designing and the engineering and all the CAD modeling on this new bike that I want to build. So I'm excited to show all you guys the step-by-step -step process from start to finish that I use when CAD modeling my next custom motorcycle project. So let's dive in. All right guys, welcome to my home office. I've got the KC1200 loaded up here in CAD. I've got my Starbucks, as this won't surprise the people who know me. But I've got it loaded up in my CAD program, which is Onshape. Um, Onshape is a cloud-based program, not a hard drive program. I won't dive into it too deep, um, but I've had a lot of luck with it, and I really enjoy this program. So here's the assembly. We're gonna go through all the different processes and design components that I went through and all the different engineering of different parts. Um, but we're gonna start with the assembly here just to show you the complete bike. Um, and then we'll dive into all the different parts and then we'll come back to the assembly so you can see it uh, finished up once again. So we're gonna start with the chassis. So first of all, when you design anything in CAD, anything at all, motorcycle or whatever industry you're in, you know, people design so many different things in CAD today. Um, you need to understand what you're going for. You know, you're going to be so much more efficient when you have a predetermined idea of what you're after um, when you're modeling. And I just kind of ruminate on it and think about things before I start modeling. You know, if I want to build a bike, I'm thinking about th this thing for months uh, before I start the, even the modeling process. So once I kind of understand what I want to do, and in this case, I knew what I was after. I wanted to uh, build a road race style uh, Harley Davidson, uh, sort of the predecessor to the bike I built last year. Um, so with that being said, um, you need to think about, okay, if I'm gonna build a road race bike, it's gonna have 17 inch wheels, it's gonna have this size tires, and I need to hit the geometry um, perfectly for a road race application. So when I draw a motorcycle, when I start a motorcycle in CAD, the very first thing that I do is I start with a 2D geometry sketch. So the first drawing that I uh, draw before I make any parts, any solids, is the geometry layout right here in 2D. So this is how you're going to want to start everything um, when you're designing a motorcycle. So as you can see here, um, I have the wheelbase um, plotted out. I have the wheel size. I have um, the swing arm pivot area right here. I have the counter shaft sprocket right here. I have the distance between the two. I have the height difference between the two, you know? Because in a lot of racing applications, that distance between the swing arm pivot and the counter shaft spr sprocket is very important. Um, a lot of times they're, you know, three to four inches apart, and then the pivot will sit slightly above uh, depending on the race bike. So also in this, uh, geometry layout. I'm going to determine how far I want the front wheel uh, to sit from the crankshaft. So the origin of the model right here uh, is where the crankshaft sits. So I guess I should back up uh, one step. So when I actually, the very, very first thing that I do uh, before I even do the geometry layout, which is the first drawing, when you bring the engine into CAD, when you bring that engine in the power plant, kind of the heart of your CAD model, the first thing you want to do is center that crankshaft on the origin of the model, that you want that to be perfectly centered. Um, I like to use the crankshaft because then I can measure everything off of that. So, um, but in this model, the origin is the center of the crankshaft. So when I go to do my 2D geometry layout, I can say I want my front wheel 24 inches from the crankshaft or 25 or 26 um, or wherever you choose to put it. Um, and 
Like here I have the rake set at 66 degrees, which is a 24 degrees uh, head tube angle. You know, 90 minus 66 is 24, of course. Um, and the nice thing about starting with um, a geometry layout like this and why it's so important is because when you go to make your parts you know you can see all uh, along the bottom here my frame my swing arm my suspension drawings all of that stuff if you want to make changes to your geometry as you're progressing through your modeling stages you just go back to your original geometry sketch you make that change let's say i wanted to go to 25 degree head tube angle or 26 you can make that change and if you set your models up properly it will make that change throughout all the modeling and that's what's very important so you start with the geometry layout and then you draw your chassis your frame to this geometry layout and if you were to make a change it would change the frame it would change the chassis and then when i go to draw my swing arm the first thing i'm going to bring into the swing arm model is uh, the 2d geometry sketch so draw the swing arm off of that and then if i make a change with the 2d geometry sketch the swing arm will change or the suspension um, so it's very important to start off with a geometry sketch that you can use throughout the entire modeling process so i wish i could show you guys everything but it would just take so long to go through step by steps on how to draw things today i'm just going to show you the cad modeling i'm not going to teach you how to draw or model so the first thing I'm going to show you is the frame. Um, and I will actually overlay it over the geometry sketch here so you can see what I'm talking about. You've got the geometry sketch behind it and you can see how I use that to draw the chassis. Let me tell you a little bit about the frame here and what I'm going for. So this is a trellis style frame versus a basket style frame. And what that means is the engine is a structural component to the engineering of the chassis so it clamps over the engine like this and uh, i will actually unsuppress the engine here so you can see it um, so it's going to be a trellis style chassis i'll show you just briefly with the engine inside of it here so it's a trellis style chassis a basket style chassis there would be frame rails underneath uh, the engine so in that case, the engine would not be structural, but in this case it is. And then the next thing I wanna tell you is it's going to be a hammer formed style chassis, you know, a square tube style chassis. So you can see that none of the tubing or the, the chassis sections are round tubes. So I'm going to achieve this in multiple ways. Um, why am I doing this? Well, number one, it's a challenge for me um, in terms of fabrication. Number two, I think it looks very production. It looks very trick. It gives it a clean finish production feel. And uh, it's just really cool. Um, so with that being said, you know, there'll be more videos that come on how I actually get to the fabrication portion of this when I'm building the chassis, but I will achieve these boxed sections um, in multiple ways. Some, some of the sections I will be breaking sheet metal with a break. Other sections that are more obscure, uh, like this back area that's splitting off to the swing arm pivot, I will actually use uh, solid bucks and I'll hammer sheet metal around it uh, to make those shapes and that's called hammer forming. So some other things that I wanna tell you about this chassis is I'm actually gonna use the spine of the chassis here, the backbone uh, as the oil tank. So I'm going to uh, fill this area with oil. It's already to capacity, I already checked it. And then there will be a spigot that comes off the backbone here uh and then up through the fuel cell to as your oil fill so that's where the oil will be and the reason i wanted to get it in the spine here is because i wanted this area here the subframe area um for an additional fuel cell so i can so i can have more fuel cell capacity um obviously to cross larger distances 
So this is the chassis. It's going to be really fun. Uh, it's a trellis style hammer form frame and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be very challenging um, from a, a fabrication standpoint, uh, but it'll be good. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the swing arm. This will all start making more sense um, when I have it in the assembly. The swing arm here is sort of obscurely shaped as well. You can see it's tapered both directions um, and that's going to be a hammer formed part as well. I'm not going to use uh, normal rectangular tubing. Um, you can see this gusset area is, is very fancy. That's going to be a hammer formed part as well. Um, and then the uh, suspension pickup loop is actually going to run underneath the swing arm. Your chain will run through here. You'll pick up the suspension components here. And uh, obviously this is your swing arm pivot area there. So again, I will show you more of this as we get into the assembly at the end. Next, I'll show you the rear suspension. So very simple, a, triang a triangle, a uh, triangle, link suspension setup. This is not reinventing the wheel, uh, but it's going to be proprietary to this bike. So uh, it'll attach to the swing arm here. This is the shock pickup point, um, and then it'll attach to the chassis uh, right here. So again, as we get to the assembly at the end, I'll show you all of these parts as they work together. So, you know, just going through some of the parts, uh, you know, here's the subframe. Right, I wanted to keep that square tubing uh, theme going throughout the subframe. Uh, here's the mounts for that additional fuel cell in the back. Um, rear suspension. What else do we have here? We've got the exhaust set up. Here's the muffler. Um, of course, it'll be all titanium. This is subjective uh, to changing a little bit once I see sort of the aesthetics of the bike. Um, what else do we have here? Subframe, rear suspension. We've got uh, some of the body pieces here, the tail unit. Um, again, this is subjective to change as well. Um, once I can see the rolling chassis and the bike rolling around, you know, uh, some of the aesthetic components like the body work or the fuel cell, which we'll get to right now, um, all this stuff, let me hide this. This was a little, uh, dash panel I was working on, but you know, all of the aesthetics of the bike, the fuel cell, the tail unit, the exhaust, the um, headlight fairing, you know, all the things that sort of uh, styling wise are subjective to change a little bit from the CAD modeling, but the geometry, the chassis, the swing arm, you know, the skeleton of the bike, the frame, that's going to be built verbatim. And that's really what the CAD is for, is to get that chassis nailed down tight. Um, and then of course, to look at all the aesthetics like the fuel cell as well because that's all very important as well. So here you can see I just briefly sketched a, real, a rear uh, fuel cell for the subframe. I'm going to show you that in the assembly as well. So without diving too deep here uh, into CAD, I should just tell you for those of you that are very new to this, um, there's two very, well there's like three, but the two that I'm gonna tell you today, um, two parts of CAD that are very, very important and relevant, especially in this situation. So all of these parts that I'm showing you, you know, the mufflers, the frame, the swing arm, um, the rear suspension, the fuel cell, all these parts were, were modeled in what's called a part studio, okay? Basically, that's where you engineer the part. That's where you draw it, model it, you know, design it, make it, and that's what all these tools are for at the top here. These are all used for different um, things to engineer that part. And then once you have these parts engineered, you take them all, and you bring them to what is called an assembly. And, the, and an assembly is where you mate all the parts together and you can work it together. You can make things rotate, you can make things slide, um, you can make things solid, um, all kinds of things. So that's, that's, how, that's the most efficient way 
to use CAD. So after I draw all these parts, I bring them over here to the assembly and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. This is where you spend most of your time. So here's kind of your final um, product here, right? You've got your headers, um, you've got your tail unit, you've got your additional fuel cell in the back, your primary fuel cell, your frame, your handlebars, your wheels, sprockets, suspension, swing arm, everything. It's all here to look at. Um, and this is where you can, you know, as you're putting the parts together, you can say, huh, do I like that? Um, does that make sense to me? Is that gonna work? Uh, am I gonna have any clearance issues? Is that safe? That's where you can really look through what you're designing. So I'll show you here how this suspension works. These are all on rotating mates and I can see how the suspension is going to work. I can move it and I can run it through its stroke like that and say, okay, yeah, that should work. You know, that's just an example of how the assembly works. So you can see it all together here and uh, how it's gonna work. Um, it takes a long time to design this stuff um, but it's very important for me because it saves you a lot of time. Once you get to the building portion, um, there's not a lot of guesswork, you know? You know exactly what you're going for and you can just charge forward. The last thing I wanted to tell you guys is like, some of the finer details obviously on this bike are not modeled yet, right? Um, I would call this phase one of CAD modeling. And what I'm trying to achieve with phase one of the CAD modeling is basically to nail your chassis geometry and your stance perfectly. This is about, I need to build the chassis, so I need to make the frame verbatim and perfect and the suspension exactly how I want, the geometry, and then let's package some aesthetic components in there like the fuel cell, the tail unit, some of that stuff just to get a feel of how this bike is going to look proportionally. But you'll notice that some of the finer details are not modeled yet. Foot controls, you know, gas fills, oil fills, dash panels, fuel caps, you know, brake calipers, brake hangers, axles, swing arm pivots, you know, the hardware in the bike, um, you know, risers, there's so many things, fine things that are not modeled yet. And I like to wait because I got to see the motorcycle rolling around. Like you got to kind of build the chassis, get the wheels and tires on it in real life and take a look at it and say, okay, how do I want this build? How do I want that build? Because so many times in the past, I've modeled everything start to finish, like foot controls, literally everything on this on a bike. And then once I get the first stages built, like the chassis and the, the rolling chassis and some of that stuff, I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's right where I want the foot controls or, I don't know if I really like the way they look now that I see it in person. So I've, been, I've seen this movie, I've been down this road. So I like to do phase one CAD modeling, build the chassis, get the rolling chassis done so I can see it in real life. My computer's running low here. Roll it around in the shop and say, okay, let's move on to phase two. How do I actually want the fuel cell to look now? How do I actually want the tail unit to look? The, the, the additional fuel cell, how, where do I want my feet on this thing when I'm riding it? How do I want the foot controls to look? So that's just the general uh, layout of the land for CAD modeling. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. I'm super excited to get this project going and start building this chassis. Um, it's gonna be a challenge for me. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty neat ride. So I'll do it in stages. I will uh, capture all of the content every step of the way, post videos the whole time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time on the Cullico YouTube channel. See you later.